uh, Minister Richard Beloy, and uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, local government, corporate governance, and uh, what's happening in your communities, and service delivery and other issues, and we're going to start getting through to the questions of the guests that we have here, but also you at home uh, via tweets and uh, via email. Please get them through to you. Just before we go to the table, one quick question. Your, your comment generally the role of traditional affairs. Uh, what, what is the job there? I mean, we, we're in 2012. Some people will say we've got a great constitution. Um, maybe, you know, let the traditional issues be more ceremonial than active and, and participative. In this country, we, we do have traditional communities. And, and, and by the reality of our, our history, traditional communities, traditional institutions, traditional leaders have not been playing ceremonial roles. Mm -hmm. We saw them active on questions of development. We saw them active on questions of, of, of a, a administration of justice through the traditional courts and, and settling of disputes and the like. We said in our constitution uh, that uh, the traditional institutions are recognized. We passed an act or acts of parliament that further strengthened that to then say they have a role, developmental. It will be risky, actually, to be part of cutting and pasting if we were to talk about our dispensation now as if we, we want to reduce to ceremonial level the role of traditional institutions. Mm -hmm. It is the pride, it's one of our proud heritage. It's a question of locating within institutions of democracy how we deal with these issues. When it comes to issues around the, the administration of land, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know that the, 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 there are specific roles that have to play. So I think if there are those who say, Let, let's get our traditional institutions to play like just ceremonial roles, mm -hmm. we, we might as well want to do something in terms of strengthening their tools of analysis. Firstly, to understand where we are coming from with the institution of traditional role. Now, that's why mm. the, 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 the strengthening that we're doing at the moment, the space that we, 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 we are not creating space, but is to further define for the understanding of all that traditional leaders have, have a, role a role to play. To play. So well, that is exactly, that's why even in terms of our, even when we talk about yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the issues of a, a turnaround strategy, we then say, let's include doing things differently. Mm. Okay, well, let's, we'll chat a little bit more about that, particularly vis-a-vis -vis the traditional courts bill, which is a little bit contentious. But let's go to our table straight away. Um, table number seven, uh, Chris, uh, is that Litole? Yes, good morning, uh, program director, minister, ladies and gentlemen. I want to ask a question here. There is a new newspaper that has been launched recently uh, called Inside Sports Africa. It's very new, and it plans to expose new talents from as far as rural areas and the villages, places where most of us come from. All right, okay, the we're, two, we're struggling to hear you a little bit, so if you can just be quite concise. Okay, I was saying there is a newspaper that was recently launched called Inside Sports, New, uh, Inside Sports Africa. It is going to be focusing on sports. Okay. All sorts of sports, not only soccer. Okay. And it intends to expose rural talents from rural villages and um, homesteads, not only from township. The two departments under your ministry, Mr. Minister, are the ones that are very close to local communities. They are the ones that are physically there. They have their presence, not only through media or through uh, TVs. I wanted to find out from you, Mr. Minister, as to how do you see 
the two departments assisting these newspapers to expose that raw material uh, from all these rural villages. You will find that um, most of the kids from these areas, their talents are not discovered basically because of where they stay and where they come from. Okay. You only end up uh, having people from Soweto and Atrechville being the ones that are playing uh, main, main role in their, in their sports. Thank you very much. All right, okay. So just for the record, there's always one person who asks a very long question. He's the one for today. Everyone else? <laughs> okay. All right, Minister. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, uh, thanks, Chris. I think, uh, as, as Chris has indicated, that uh, this is uh, a, a newly launched uh, a, a initiative. Mm. We still have to get to know more about them. But, of course, uh, uh, inside sports, uh, 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 Africa has, has indicated, we, we are then saying, uh, when you talk about the development of the local area, you also talk about talent development from sports. What is it that we communicate as benefits? You know, some will then say 2010 came, uh, we, 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 we hosted the tournament, but some will then say, what is it that we're benefiting? You'll find others even going to the extreme of them saying there has been absolutely no benefit. The AFCON is here. We are hosting that as a country. We need the message, sports-based messages, to be communicated, communicated to the people, so that uh, even the young ones mm -hmm. who would like to avail themselves to, to, for, for talent development. We have, as, 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 as this ministry, established a concept of inviting businesses to adopt municipalities. We, we then see business adopt a municipality, and I think some of the businesses may be around here. Business adopt a municipality. Now, through this information, communication, through sports, uh, inside Sports Africa, I think we can reach out to then see mm -hmm. where do we have a need to deal with those issues. So I think we can, we can, we can actually okay. have a session with Chris and talk more about that. Okay, Chris, there you have an audience. Um, Let's go to table number eight, uh, Sdumo Dlamini Kosati. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Peter. Minister, how are you in the department integrating with uh, the policy debate on the creation of a single public service? Okay, short and sweet. Thank you very much for the question. We, we are contributing in, in, in that debate to, to then see, also dispelling the notion, uh, uh, Mr. President, because there are those who are afraid of talking about the single public service issue, thinking that when we say single, we mean that we are going to disestablish some of the spheres and remain with one. So, so our policy contribution is that we have taken the first step. We have amended the Municipal Systems Act to provide for space that we, we, we then talk about this issue with the understanding that we are talking about single in the sense that when it comes to policies that are meant to shape the, the manner in which we do things, these policies should mm -hmm. cut across. Take, for instance, the good policy of Batupeli. At the moment, you find that Batupeli, unless if a municipality adopt it as their service delivery policy or culture, they are actually free to operate without that. So through the single public service, we'll be able to, to address this and also to provide space for both horizontal and vertical mobility, where we, we will transfer skills from one sphere to another without those people having to lose a, 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 their, 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 their employment or, 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 or record. So that's a very important point. We are, we are contributing into that space uh, through that. And also, we are in the same cluster with the, the Department of Public Service and Administration. So we operate as like, like twins to create that dispensation. Okay, let's go to table number five. Uh, Jose Moloy.
Thank you, Peter. Uh, Minister, my question is one, especially in our province, the Free State. I don't know about the other uh, provinces. Uh, the Municipal Structures Act amended. It's not implemented ever since that traditional leaders should take part as ex officio in uh, the municipality. That is my question because we are now on the 18th year and since then nothing so far has happened. Thank you. Okay. The, the, thank you very much and, and thanks Jose for the question. We are encouraging municipalities to be law compliant. And, and we are going from one to another because there is just no choice for people to comply or not comply. The message is very clear. When it comes to the uh, Structures Act, more especially on the question of local participation uh, by a traditional leaders at the local municipality level, it is one of the uh, amendment or the review that we are leading to deal with, 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 with that question mm -hmm. through the a traditional affairs bill that we'll be introducing to Parliament to further talk about some of the connections that have to be put together to get these things to happen. Because we'll understand there are those who will then say, if you allow traditional leaders at the municipality level to operate like at the same level with councillors, it means that you must allow and subject them to the normal practice of democracy at that particular level. Where sometimes, uh, uh, Peter, mm -hmm. it, it, when you find council in action, uh, I mean, uh, politicians can sometimes call each other to order. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes <laughs> when you want to drive your point, mm -hmm. you feel that you must drive your point and include the person you're addressing, even at first name level. Right. How yeah. do we deal with this mm -hmm. reality mm -hmm. when that person is a traditional leader? Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that, 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 that are the you find it's a councillor, it's a subject of the traditional leader. It's a question of transformation management. We are quite aware of some of those things. In some instances, you find that it's not a question of not wanting to. Mm -hmm. It's a question of then say, what are the other things that go with that? Mm -hmm. And we are working on that, Jose Muloy. We thank you for that question. We will actually be dealing okay. with the situation. Well, well, whilst we're on that point, this traditional courts bill has... Uh, uh, met with some resistance, particularly from people like um, Mampela Rampela, who's almost taken this as a, as a cause celebre, saying that it's problematic and it's actually bringing us backwards, particularly for women, uh, if the bill goes as it's, as, as it's uh, uh, put together. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that there are valid concerns that she's raising? Well, in a democracy, when you deal with a lawmaking like in our country, you, you subject the process to the views of the people. Uh, and as you subject the process to the views of the people, you listen to what the people say and pick up on what is of value and, and, and provide space for that. And, and also note what may just be issues raised but not commanding a, 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 that a value to then affect some of these issues. Let me address this thing. You see, the traditional courts bill is not introducing traditional courts in South Africa. Traditional courts are there, mm. just as old as the institution of traditional rule. A, traditional courts are there, mm. and traditional courts are presiding as we speak, even before the bill was introduced, presiding and addressing some of the issues. The debate is fine. Let people raise issues so that at the end of the day, we don't miss any of the essential uh, uh, ingredients that should actually go into that legislation once it becomes an act. Like people will say, look, I stay in a traditional community. I want to have the, the, the right of exclusion. I stay in this traditional area, 
there's a traditional court. These matters are classified as matters that must be addressed at the traditional court level, but I feel like I should be excluded from that. Mm -hmm. There are people who are raising those things. Let them raise that, but also look at the consequence of that. Are we not isolating ourselves mm -hmm. in the community where we live? So the debate is fine, but let's actually agree that it is the right thing to do to come with, the, with that bill, to strengthen, mm -hmm. not to create additional costs. So as it is now, can people opt out as it's legislated at the moment? It's, an, it's, a view, it's a view that is raised, that people should be allowed to opt out. Okay, so as it's written right now. But when, you know, it, when it comes to a final stage where it becomes an yeah. act, it will depend on how that loss is going to be shaped okay. and how it is managed. Because you see, you pass it, legislation, but also mm. uh, develop regulations to facilitate its implementation. And you know that women, in our traditional societies, men rule, women obey. Is that not going to further cement that uh, kind of thinking? You know, when we look at the, at, at the situation uh, in the country, we should agree that we don't become static. Uh, that you think that what you observed in one area at some stage is a reality throughout. I attend traditional courts myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and in the traditional courts there where I, I attend, there are men, there are women. You don't see an outright, you don't see an outright practice that says because you are a, a, a woman, there will be this dispensation for you. Mm -hmm. So I think people have to be realistic in terms of raising issues so that they are not just debate at an academic level, but they should be debate informed by the real situation. So our development, I mean the level of development in this country, we said as the ruling party mm. uh, that South Africa mm. will be a non-sexist country mm. and we cannot pass any piece of law mm. that actually promotes the opposite of that. So there should be no fear. All People right. should understand and locate the, the issues that they raise within a given environment. But I believe that there's ANC legislatures such as the Northwest, Eastern Cape, and Gauteng are not keen on this bill either. So even your own party is at odds with itself or over this issue. Democracy allows that people raise their views it is a democratic practice. Mm. Let people raise their issues, let them be listened to. But what will be wrong will be to criticize like as if this, this bill is creating the courts themselves. The courts are there practicing. Okay. Do we want a dispensation where these courts are not regulated? The answer is no. Okay. Do you want a situation where you have got a fragmented a society in terms of interpreting? The answer is no. Then what do you do? Pass a bill into an act okay. that will govern that environment. That's exactly what we're doing. And listen to what the people are saying. All right, well, we shall hear what the people say. Let's get to table number 13. Is that uh, Shisana Baloy? Thank you, Minister. I just uh, decided to digress a bit and concentrate on health because that's part of my domain. I wanted to find out how the department is going to integrate with the other departments, introducing a maternal and mortality rate, trying to reach Millennium Development Goal number four and five. I don't care. Okay, and do you want to just say that again? I'm struggling to hear you, unfortunately. I want to find the strategy from the department, how it's going to integrate with other departments, especially the Department of Health, introducing the maternal mortalities which we have in achieving Millennium Development Goal number four and five. Okay. As we have just launched the Karma, Karma is a campaign for accelerated reduction in maternal mortality in Africa. All right, do you get that? It says the, 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 what is the role of the local government and tradition uh, in achieving Millennium Development Goals number four, five, and six? six in relation to uh, Karl Mann, yeah, um, do you get that? In relation to what? Is this Karl Mann? 
Can you say that again? Sorry, we're struggling to understand the question. How much is the campaign on acceleration of reduction of maternal mortality rate in uh -huh. Africa? It was launched by the Department of Health in, in Durban. As you say in Africa. Okay. The, the work towards attaining the, the objectives and commitment in terms mm -hmm. of the Millennium Development Goals is actually integrated in the programs that we do. We have a target that by 2014 we should be at a particular mm -hmm. area. In as far as those that activities that are a Millennium Development Goals a, a driven or oriented and are performed by the sector departments. Through the cooperative governance arrangement, that, that is where we then say, let, let, let's, let's deal with, with, with these issues. Because a, that area that is raising will then also talk directly related to the area that we're talking about here in, in, in strengthening our dispensation such that there is no space for a, a, a discrimination according to, to, to gender. Okay. I think that's a situation that, if, if I get him correctly, that is talking to. Okay, let's go to table number 12. Uh, Luzuko, uh, the new age. Good morning, Minister. I, morning. I'd like to know, after the turnaround strategy, if the municipalities are still not performing, what action will be taken against those municipalities? Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. If municipalities don't perform, we have a duty to support them. Support municipalities. Firstly, you must understand why are they not performing. Then we extend a hand and address them, support them, uh, in partnership, of course, uh, firstly as the responsibility of provincial departments and then ourselves. Mm -hmm. But in a situation where you realize that you are doing whatever you can, you can this municipality is just not pulling its weight. We have a, a, a duty where if municipalities fail to execute their executive responsibilities, you, you, you put that municipality under administration. Section 139 of the Constitution give us that power. But we, we then see, firstly, let it be a municipality that you just can't do anything about. So that the, the issue should not be like, it becomes an easy thing to say Section 139. But it must be a responsibility uh, for all of us, more especially as, as COCTA to then say what is the problem and assist the municipality. So support is the name of the game. That's why we then say we'll support all municipalities, but if a municipality has actually reached a stage of uh, a, 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 a beyond a responsiveness to intervention, then you then say you don't have a, a municipality here. You, you then intervene. I think there's a, a related question yes. here uh, from uh, Mboneni Mlaudzi on table number one. I'm going to come to table number one now. Um, do you want to ask your question? Because I think it's related to what's just been asked now. Table number one. Um, good morning, uh, uh, Minister, and good morning to everyone. Uh, I, I actually wrote, I thought you were going to read it, but let me try and put it together. Uh, I was saying, uh, when I look at it, uh, and please do indulge me a little bit, uh, I come from a very rural area in, in somewhere in Venda. And I get there and I know that we haven't experienced drought in a while. But people say we don't have water and they have to put tanks. And I ask the question, what could be the problem? And uh, one of the things that I thought uh, could be the issue is that we, we have a, a twin challenge of uh, skills a shortage and corruption on the other on the other hand that seem to work to worsen the situation and i'm wondering what is it that the department uh, is doing uh, what plans do they have to deal with this twin challenge be of course beyond uh, beyond rhetoric and uh, um, 
what maybe has been done before so that we deal with that, skill, uh, that twin challenge. Okay, all right, so and underperforming municipalities, yes. he's suggesting skills yes. shortages yes. and corruption yes. could be at the heart of that. Yes. What are you doing? Let, 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 let's start with uh, the corruption part of it. Mm. We, we are at an advanced stage of developing a framework that deals with ethics and integrity uh, in the public sector nipping it at the butt so that when you see a development of unethical uh, 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 conduct that may ultimately find itself at the highest level where you talk of corruption, what do you do about that? The do's and the don'ts. Mm -hmm. In terms of that, we, 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 we then raising very important questions to then talk about, like for instance, do you want to allow your uh, uh, municipal operators, be it councillors and or, or employees, developing business sometimes, uh, and sometimes even doing a business with government. Mm. Those are the things that you need to do. But then we have a, a, a section or a unit in Cogta, uh, which is called the Anti-Corruption Inspectorate. We have picked up that uh, uh, although you might be saying that uh, this inspectorate has teeth, uh, they were not sharp enough to bite to the extent of people feeling the pain. We have entered into other agencies to give a boost to this uh, 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 inspectorate so that we, we, we reach a stage where when we then say we bite, we bite and the people will see. It is for that reason mm. that uh, we'll be making a call in the end uh, and I'm making a call now mm. that uh, w firstly to say that uh, we will prioritize, give priority to 10 municipalities per province mm. where we are going to deal with, these are municipalities where there are indications that uh, things are not going well or simply put corruption is rife. Ten. We don't have mm -hmm. the names now. We are calling mm -hmm. on the people to provide if you suspect that this is something that is happening. Mm -hmm. Talk and to us through that number that I've provided. Mm -hmm. Then you will see that uh, these teeth will go deep into the flesh of the corrupt. We will cut all the three legs. That's our commitment. Okay. All the three legs of corruption, the corruptors, the corruptees and the environment. Okay. This is the situation that we want to turn around. And there'll be no heads spared, even at the highest level, you'll deal with them? No, 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 no holy cows, okay. unfortunately. Because if we do that, we're just making a mockery of our own intervention when we deal with these issues. Okay. That definitely will have to be, to, be, to be the case. You can't talk of teeth, and you also then want to uh, apply an instrument that, that, that will actually get these teeth to be blunt and not, not be, okay. be sharp. So let's participate. Let people talk to us through that number. And we'll communicate. Why don't we give a budget vote in the next year? What about the skills? Because the skills part, yeah. The yeah. skills part I've indicated that on the one hand, we we'll talk about skills development. Mm. MISA has been created to be a ring-fenced environment. That not only focuses on infrastructure, pure infrastructure, because to focus on infrastructure development, but you don't build the capacity. You don't build the capacity of those who operate on this. It's just a waste of time. Capacity building is a priority that we're actually addressing. And, and that's where, through that capacity building unit, which is part of, of, of MESA, we also are saying the revolving door policy must work. We need to build this capacity. The revolving door policy that I spoke about is this partnership between academic community and, 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 and okay. government. And what is interesting is that you also have private sector developing interest to then say, no, no, we want to be on board. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're going to do to build this capacity. But of course, you talk about capacity in relative terms. It's also a factor of good governance. This capacity that we talk about 
Was it lost when, after these people were appointed, or they did not come with it? Now, if it is that they did not come with it, then that makes a reflection on our recruitment. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with, with, with these issues? We know that uh, there is a, a minimum competence requirement mm -hmm. that uh, between a COCTA and, and, and Treasury, we then say 2013, this minimum competency thing. It's, a, it's, it's an issue that mm -hmm. we're looking at then say, entry into mm -hmm. a particular position has to be based on merit so that if it is cap is, it, yeah. is this capacity loss, then it, 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 we must address. Of but course, capacity also talks about systems. But isn't part of the problem also political deployees? Political deployment itself is not necessarily mm. wrong. It depends mm. on what factors that the de those who deploy are considering. Mm. Talk about cadre de 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 deployment. Mm. Uh, in, in, in public service, uh, uh, through Palama, we 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 coming we came with a determined a determined program where you talk about attributes of a cadre in public service. Mm. Talk about eight attributes. Deployment for as long as it's a question of it's not based on payback for, for whatever, mm. but it's based on careful selection. Deployment is not like you see my understanding is that placement and mm. deployment differ. Where you deploy, you must have applied your mind, mm. fully applied your mind. It's not like availability becomes a quality. Mm. It's not like a, pe a person who sings your, your slogans become a, a quality. The quality is, is this person commanding the requisite merit to be in a position to deal with this issue. That's exactly what we need okay. to do. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then after that, we'll come back to table number six and Ditego, who can uh, get themselves ready. All right, and don't forget you two at home. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, you'd like to participate in this conversation, do so. We look forward to those uh, tweets and those emails.